And it's the share of older workers, both in the workplace and taking jobs. Our Kate Rogers joins us with some details on that. Kate? Hey, Kelly. Companies like Humana have been recruiting more workers 55 and up since 2018. That demographic now makes up for 20 percent of its workforce. The goal is to have its workers represent the people it's serving in the healthcare community. Humana says the key in recruiting this set of workers was flexibility, analyzing benefit choices, and finding ways for older workers to connect with colleagues. All of those things have contributed to, again, the work-life balance, and the culture within our walls and the ways that, again, older workers can see themselves being here for the long haul. The AARP Foundation has a program called Back to Work 50 Plus that helps mature workers with their resumes and interview process. We spoke to Jackie Jakes Johnson, who used that program to re-enter the workforce after stepping away to care for her mother in 2018. She's now an office manager in Chicago at age 57. Older workers, they bring experience that you don't find in the workplace anymore. They bring dedication, loyalty. So I think that is a lot of what we bring that younger people don't because millennials jump from job to job and we tend not to. The AARP has an employer pledge program being committed to a diverse workforce as well. And the number of companies that have signed it from 2021 to 2022 rather increased by more than 100 percent, Kelly, to now 2,500 companies, including Humana, of course. So companies are really out there looking to recruit these more mature employees to help close the gap and bring more people on. Back over to you. All right. So, Kate, and thank you for that. Diane, do you want to just respond uh, to this phenomenon and this, the macro significance of it? Well, what's really happening out there is we saw the participation rate among older workers rise until February 2020, then it dropped off a cliff. What we've seen is even those over 55 have fallen since February of 2020. What we've seen come back is the participation rate among prime age workers driven by a record high participation among prime age women. Now, unfortunately, you can't say this too much, but I technically by the government statistics, I'm out of my prime because it's 25 <laughs> to 54 year old workers. Um, Don't but, get into Nikki Haley in all, trouble here, fairness, Diane. I know, I know. I, I still think I'm in my prime, so I'm fine there. But um, I think it's really imp important that we've seen prime age women come back. And part of the reason prime age women have come back, even though uh, and actually gone to a new record high, that's great. We're still trailing all of our competitors out there, including those to the north in Canada by over 8 percent in our participation rate. That's sad. Wow. And that's unacceptable. Male participation rate is even lower among prime age workers than other competitors around the world. So we still have a long mm. way to go. But the good news is they're coming back. I'll add one last thing. And I think it's important is the child care crisis is still with us. And those over 55 they're, they're citing that their women are, are come out of the workforce two times as more likely than men to be caring for someone in the home. Bingo. And they're often caring for younger mm. children to be able to let women work. Kate, I, I love it when the market forces businesses to stop doing stupid things. <laughs> so, for example, for exa here's one. A majority of graduate students are going to be women. So businesses have gotten hip to the idea they better make the workforce better place for women if they want to have smart people in their workforce. Here's another thing, which is that the big decline of participation has been among older workers. Mm -hmm. And so this idea that businesses are going to have to figure out how to make the workplace a better place for older folks is stopping them from doing something they should have been doing all along, hmm. which is doing something stupid. How's that? Is that my two for two on that, Kate? <laughs> I think that makes sense, Steve. And the AARP actually surveyed its membership and asked what some of the things that mattered most to this set of workers coming back. Flexibility was key, uh, being appreciated for your skill set. So talking about ageism and not being appreciated necessarily by younger colleagues was something that matters a lot. But that flexibility point, I think, you know, transcends age, right? Everyone's looking for flexibility in this post-pandemic world. And I think a lot of employers are recognizing that. And to build on something that Diane mentioned about caring for someone in the home and workers 55 and up leaving the workforce to do something like that, uh, that's happening with older people in the home as well. So Jackie Jakes Johnson, who we mentioned, she was caring for her mother. So she yeah. had to leave the workforce and then wound up finding this opportunity and had to go back at age 55 and up mm -hmm. because she had to step away to care for her mom. And we have to remember, people are living longer, right? And so that's right. also a factor here as well. I talked factor. to somebody who, um, who decided to put more light in the workplace. Light? light. Oh, for, old, light for, for older folks. 
<laughs> give them bigger screens, and that was something. The only problem with all this is a lot, when we did our survey on labor force, where we we'll take people to come back, a lot of people concerned about health. Sure. And, and the mm. pandemic spooked some people out. Yep and decided not to come back, I'm not sure how you solve no, that you problem. You just got to get used to this idea when people leave the workforce, you know, get them back in. It doesn't have to become, you know, an issue Permanent. down yeah. the road. We'll leave it there, everybody. Thank you so much today. Our Kate Rogers, Diane Swank, and Steve Leisman.